Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's do some prayers before our class. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmei Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhur Bhavaswaha, Tat Savitra Varenu, Vargo Deva Sedimahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat, Asto Ma Sadgamya, Tamso Ma Jyotirgamya, Mrityur Ma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehnavavatu, Sehnavunatu, Sehviryam Karvavai, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvi Shavahi, Om Shanti 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 And there's a peace invocation in front of her. Right in the beginning of this Upanishad also. Let's recite that too. Om Vang Me Manasihi Pratishtita Mana Me Vachi Pratishtitam Avir Avir Me Edhi Vedasya Me Anistaha Shrutam Me Maparhasi Anen Aditen Aho Ratran Sandhami Ritam Vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Tat Maam Avutu Tat Vaktaram Avutu Avtu maam, avtu vaktaram, avtu vaktaram, om shanti, shanti, shanti. Let's go to where we ended our last week's class. And that was verse number 11 of that section. Where the Rishi is saying, after creating all the devdas, the creator thought, how can all these remain without me? So he pondered, by which of the two ways shall I enter the organs? He again thought, if speaking be done by speech, smelling by the nose, seeing by the eyes, hearing by the ears, touching by the skin, Thinking by the mind, eating by the upon movement, and emitting by the generative organs, then who am I? Who am I? So now let's look at what happened after this great assemblage of parts. The faculties which cannot have any justification or any sense of fulfillment without the Atma, without God. Verse number 12. Sa etam ev simanam vidraye etyaha dwara prapadyat. Sa esha vidriti nam dwatat etat nandanam. Tasyetre avastaha treyasvapnaha. Ayam avastha. I am avastha, I am avastha, iti. So means he, the creator. Etam, this. Ev means alone. Simanam, suture of the skull. Vidraye, opened. Like made a hole. Etya by this, Dwara by that door, Prapadyat entered. Sa Eshaha, that is this, Vidriti Nam, name as cleft, Vidriti, Dwa, door, Tat means that, Etat this, Nandanam, productive of joy. That is Nandan. Tasse, of him. Tre means three, avastha, dwelling place. Treya, three, swapnaha, dream. Ayam avasthatha. Ayam means this is avastha, dwelling place. 
then it's repeated three times. I am avastha, I am avastha. Iti means thus. Then he opened the suture of the skull and entered by that door. This is the door named as the Vidriti or cleft. This is the place of bliss, Nandanam. He has three dwelling places and three conditions. This is a dwelling place, this is a dwelling place, this is a dwelling place. So having contemplated upon the right gateway for himself to enter the kingdom of the body, he decided that he should enter it by the crown of the physical structure, which we all know is the most sacred and the most important of all the biological parts in our body. The soft portion representing almost an aperture or cleft. Technically, for, by the physiologists, it's called sensual suture. Perhaps this is the point which has been indicated here for us to know the importance of that portion. This is seen in the case of the newborn babies. Very soft part. We can feel the pulse, feel the depression. Higher and the most sacred powers in a human body. So it says awareness entered by that crown. We got to understand the term entry here. It should not be constructed in its literal sense. This is only a figurative explanation. Just a particular sequence in which the activity that was simultaneously and almost homogenous. It's almost like a, a pot maker makes a pot And then if somebody says he poured some space into it, where did that space come from? In fact, uh, he was sitting in the space. Pot was in the space. Space which we see after the pot is made, it was always there. Because the ball of the mud which he had before, it was in the space. The wheel which he put the mud on, that moved in the space. And as the pot was made in the space, its rising walls occupying. And it seems like conditioning the space within it in its volume. So this is what happens over here too. Brahm is everywhere. There's no place where Brahm is not. It's just like a, only the Jivatma, the conditions, the padis, they just take place around that Brahma. In the narration of this story of creation, this Rishi was compelled to give us in sequence the story of the form of the body actually. Because there was an occupation of the sense faculties, then the story of the pran, manifestation of the Gyan Shakti. Also our body is built in truth, it seemingly exists in truth, activates in truth gets enveloped in truth and it pierced through and through by truth. And this truth is the Brahma, the absolute truth which we are talking about. Nothing can exist without that. 
And it was said then that, that the manifestation of the faculties was in the following sequence. That's what we learned earlier. Speech, smell, eyes, ears, skin, hair, mind, upon. Upon, we learned that capacity to swallow down solid food, upon, and generative organs, and the seeds. And it's only later on in the maturity of the growth of the individual that he exhibits the awareness or the consciousness in him. So the Gyan Shakti manifested after the expression of the Pran Shakti in the development of the biological being. And in that sense, this sequence becomes a very scientific exposition. So the door through which he entered and he is bliss by nature. Bliss by nature entered the physical structure that cleft on the crown is called Nandanam by this Rishi. Place of bliss. That's why in our meditations also we like to go there. Nandanam. Then he says he has three dwelling places. Three avastha. Because we do get pleasure, even though it's a temporary, in those dwelling places too. Waking state, the dream state, and the deep sleep state. In all the three states, there is a play of awareness. Without the play of the Atma, these avatsads, or these states, we won't find any bliss, any happiness. We are conscious of the waking state. That's how we experience in the waking world outside. And equally, we are aware of all the objects of the dream in our dream. And that is called a dream condition. And in the deep sleep state also, we are aware of the total absence of the objects belonging to both the other two states. So this consciousness seems to play in all the different states of experiences. And the awareness as such is defined here as the Atma or the reality which has entered into this physical structure. So the idea of an extra concentration of our individual egocentric awareness in different places in ourselves during the state of different experiences, that's what this master is trying to explain. He only pointed out these centers in the physical structure. He said that eyes, eyes are very important. He talked about the nose. He talked about the skin. So through all these bodily parts or apertures, Experience goes inside us and we enjoy it. This is what he was trying to tell us. And in the dream state also, the Yoga Shastra claims that there is at the throat a kind of over-centralization of the dream ego. And it also points out that in the deep sleep state, this individualistic personality folds up its various impressions and comes to dwell in the heart space. 
So that's what he mentions, these three different spaces. So this whole structure is very important. The three states are very important. We got to get to know all these parts in our body. And know the importance of all these. But at the same time, we got to remember without the Atma, without the soul, without that Anshaf, Paramatma, none of this can happen. It's almost like a, as I was telling you last time, a building is built. Beautiful walls, the roof, the rooms, the floor, doors. Everything else is there. But if the person, the owner, is not there to enjoy it, it's useless. Useless. So we got to always remember who is the owner. So these states as well as the various dwelling places are all very clearly explained here as belonging to it. That's what the word tasse is. When we say that somebody is a dog, we mean the dog which belongs to that person. It doesn't mean that the person is a dog himself. The dog belongs to that person. So whenever we use possessive nouns, the things possessed belong to the possessor. So all of this, all these different parts, the beautiful organs belongs to the Atma. And the possessor is distinctly different from the thing possessed. Owner of the house is different than the house itself. Owner of the car is distinctly different. The same way the owner of this equipment, assemblage of this equipment is distinctly different. So the Rishi, by saying here that the states and the places of the dwelling belong to the consciousness. He means that consciousness is the possessor, the owner, the lord of the three states, and the owner of the dwelling place. So that whether it's a wakeful state, Jagratavastha, or Svapanavastha, or Sushupti, they all are owned by the owner. So the waking dream and deep sleep states are not in themselves consciousness. Because sometimes we just use the word that wakeful consciousness or dream consciousness. No. So if you really mean consciousness as the Atma, it's definitely different. It plays in the three fields and gives to them their meaning and substance. Without the Atma, this wakefulness, we cannot experience. We cannot hear, we cannot see, we can touch, we cannot smell. Just gives the energy. Then in the next verse, number 13, he says, Sajataha Bhutani Abhi Vyakat Kema Ihi Annyam Vad Vav dishat iti sa etam eva purusham brahma tatmam apashyat idam adarsham iti sa means he jataha having born bhutani beings abhi vyakhat gazed around so just like a looking around Kim means what? Eh, here, anyam, other. Vavdishat, can I name? Iti means thus. Sa hi etam this ev verily purusham. Purusha, Brahm. Tatmam, overspreading 
all. So that's like a most pervasive, the fullest like space. Okay, most pervasive. Atam. Apashyat realized. Idam means this. Adarsham seen. Iti that. Then there is a figure three after that. In Vedic texts, the figure three appearing after the word iti indicates prolongation of a sound there. So iti, in accordance with the rule, the, the vowel gets lengthened when they put the figure three there. Okay. So literal translation of this verse is, having been born, he looked around on beings. He gazed around upon the creatures. How should he speak of any other? What else is there besides the Atma for me to name? He saw verily this very Purusha, the Brahma. Overspreading all. So it's like a, everywhere he saw that Brahm is all pervading. With wonder he said to himself, Oh, I have seen this. Some of these verses are so deep. We cannot just take the literal translation. We have to break each part. Like a extremely broken with a dozen emotional pauses. And it is as it should be at all dramatic moments. When emotions overpowers thought, when ideas get fired up to its the heat of intensity, language does not conform to the conventional rules of grammar. That's what we see in these verses. The grammar evaporates into this explosive amazement or a wonderment. And it is very clear in this verse. But on the whole, this passage tries to describe the experience of the self when it entered the physical body. In its, it was still in its native purity, wisdom, and self-knowledge. It knew that I am the Atma. But looked around upon this pluralistic world through these various equipments of the sense organs, the mind, the intellect, and through the sense objects, emotions, ideas, could not perceive anything. Even though equipments were there, he saw his own essential nature everywhere. Because the Purusha, the Atma was spreading all, cried out in the ecstasy born out of the divine inspiration. There was a tranquility of the stilled mind. Oh, I have seen that. I see Brahm everywhere. That is the reason our rishis, part of those solar sanskars, when the baby is born, we are supposed to utter the name of God in the ear. 
because the newborn does remember at that time. And we are doing our part that we will help you to stay on this path because the purpose of human life is to know Brahman. The Atma or the Self is indicated by the pronoun this over here. This. Etam. We all know that we use the pronoun that and this to indicate two things. Relatively farther thing is always that. And closer thing is this. Relatively. So nearer one is always indicated but the pronoun this. That wall. This book. That book. This shawl. That shawl and this mind. That mind, this Atma. That's how that and this <coughs> is used. So ultimately, the subject, <coughs> excuse me, center, which is the nearest to us, so near that there is no other point with experience to that which we can say this. We cannot say this Atma and this Atma or this Atma and this object. It cannot be said like that. So in relationship to the Atma, that is this. So self alone was before creation, having created the form, having housed the various faculties of vision, etc. When the Atma entered without any self-forgetfulness. We are talking about that state. And gazed out in the world of polarity through the equipments of vision and knowledge could yet realize and experience his own transcendental nature. Not only that, could enjoy that divinity reflected in and through this pluralistic world. That's why I said it's like a everywhere Brahm. Everywhere the reality. I see it everywhere. And remember the word, word seen used here does not imply the method of vision which we experience in our ordinary walk of life. In self-realization, Sanskrit term for that is Atam Sakshatkar. It is only the self. Seeing the self. So that's why over here the word seen is used in a special connotation. To see an object this way is to believe it. That means there's no doubt. Is to understand it and to know it. So to believe it, to understand it and to know it without even an iota of doubt regarding its reality for the seer. So that's how this being is seeing that God everywhere. By saying that the self is seen means that the experience of the self should be so conclusive, so fully beyond all doubts and conclusions that it shall be as convincing as though one has seen the self. So that is called seen in the real sense. 
And this is what's mentioned over here, apashyata. Tatmam apashyata idam adarsham iti. So that's why I was saying that there are so many deep expressions in this small verse. The whole philosophy, our Sanatan Dharam's philosophy is in this verse. The smart idandraha nama idandraha ve nama tam idandram santam indraha iti achakshate prokshena Prokshapriya ivhi deva, Prokshapriya ivhi deva. Another beautiful verse. Tasmat, therefore, idandraha. See, if you break it down, it's idam and dra. Idam means is this, dra means seeing. So that means it's called, it's named Idandra, Naam, name Idandra, verily known as Idandra, Hava Naam. Tam Idandram, him whom is Idandra, Santam Indraha, as Indra. Achakshate is called Prokshen. Indirectly. Prokshupriya, fond of indirect name. If means verily, he is it, Devaha, Dev. Prokshupriya, fond of indirect name. See, there's a proksh and there's a proksh. Two words. So, proksh means indirect. If means verily, he as it were, Deva. Therefore, he is called Idandra. Idandra verily is his name. Though he is Idandra, he is indirectly called as Indra. For Devas are fond of the indirect names. Like a cryptic names. The gods are indeed fond of being called, as it were, by indirect names. Because he saw the all pervading Brahma subjectively as this Idam, the supreme truth is called as Idandra, Idam, this. So gods are fond of being called by their mystic names. Is called Indra. So from Idandra, it became Indra. In our life also, when we have to show respect and reverence to some people, we do not address them by their personal names. We would address them by the titles. Your Honor, Your Lord, Your Majesty, Mr. Shiriman, we use those titles. In fact, in our culture, at least the previous generation, even the wives did not call the husbands by their first names. Indirectly, they called them first with some pet names. And definitely mothers and the fathers, we never call them by their names. So where we feel respect and reverence, there we do not generally address the individual directly by his personal name. And this is what is mentioned over here. Idandra became Indra. And Deva, Deva is essentially one who appreciates who gives the light. So they are Prokshapriya. So Idandra should verily be his name. He is thus out of respect called by a shorter name by Indra. 
So this is what this Rishi is telling us. Then the next section. Apakramantu Garbhinya. That is mentioned in the beginning of this section. And that particular Apakramantu Garbhinya means the pregnant women may please leave. Why? Because in this section we have a detailed description of the various stages through which the child, the baby is born and how it develops. Another thing we can understand from this that the females, the women were equally present in these kind of teachings. But why the pregnant woman should leave? Because the whatever a mother hears, whatever mother does during pregnancy, it affects the baby psychologically. In the womb, there's a calmness. The Atma is knowing what's happening. And here we just bombard with all these different ideas before it's time. You can disturb the baby in the fetus. So then we'll see that after this section is over, the Rishi will say, now you can come in. Now you can come. So, apkramantu garbhinya. Purushe have ayam aditaha garbha bhavati. Yat etat retaha tat etat sarvebhya angebhya tejaha. Sambhutam atmani ev atmanam vibharti. Tat yada istriyam sinjati at etat janyati. Tat ase pratmam janama. Purushe. In the man, ha, where, verily, I am this adita at first, garbha, embryo, bhavati becomes. Yat means which, etat, this is, retaha, seed. Seed means the sperm. Tat means that, etat, this, sarve bhya, from all. Ange bhya, from parts, te jaha, vigor, the strength. Sambhutam is accomplished. Atmani in the self, ev means indeed, atmanam the self, vibharti bears. That means that yada ven is triyam into a womb. Sinjati pours at then etat this janyati makes it born. That that is asya his pratmam first janam birth. In a man verily this one becomes at first that germ which is called the seed. So in a man, that's sperm. That which is semen is the essence of strength and vigor. Drawn from all his limbs. In the self, indeed, one bears the self. When he pours this into a womb, he causes it to be born. This is its first birth. lot to talk about in this verse. So we will just start our next class with this. Om
पूर्ण मदा पूर्ण मिदम पूर्णात पूर्ण मुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्ण मदाय पूर्ण मेव अवशेष्यते ओम शांति 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 ओम थैंक यू वेरी मच